We've been trying to keep a secret from you guys for the last two to four weeks now. It's been hard and difficult, but today we get to reveal it. You ready to go show them? Yes. We get to show the goats it too. What do you think they're going to do? I think they're not going to be... I think they're going to not be... <coughs> it's going to take them a little bit. I do too. I want them to like run right out and bolt, jump, sprint. Be so but yeah, excited, I think but they're going to like... They're going to be like... No, I don't know if I can yeah. do this. Well, I guess we'll find out. Hope will. Hope will. Yeah, hope will. Yeah. Alright, ready for this? Yes. Yes, I'm excited too. You guys get to come along with us. It's the first time we do this. Yeah. Are you guys Are you ready? ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, Hope? Huh? Well, girl, I wasn't trying to call you girl. Right, well, man, that's not fair. I know. We got the pasture fenced in. <laughs> Hope. There you go. Look at all the room you have to run. Look. We even installed the brush for you to brush up on. And we got apple branches over here. Like, what is this? They won't get off the rock. They won't get off the rocks onto the grass. Help! Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> oh, what's Mama doing? Is that a good leaf, little man? It's grass. Look at all the pasture. Mark, I cut down some apple trees over here. Put them over here for you. Come here, Hope. This way. You enjoy in the fall foliage? Leaving some fertilizer behind. The fence just got finished putting up yesterday. We installed the gates. The terrain of the land isn't perfect, so we need to build up right here under the gates so the little baby goats can't get underneath. And we have a few things we want to do with latches. That'll be tomorrow. Today we just want to watch them play. You have all this room and you're gonna stay over here? Come on. What do you girls think, huh? We end up running the fence up alongside the rock wall as close as we could get it. I had to cut down and trim up a couple of apple trees. So now with a big area like this, we can put the apple trees in here for Hope and all the other goats to eat on, huh Hope? You guys like it? Hopi. Hope, stop. We had him pounded an extra post right here. I'll put some video footage of that right here.
Do you feel like you got a herd of goats now because they're out in pasture? We get to use the big spool again. The goats haven't climbed on this since last year. Look at all the dirt stuck on that. Oh, worms. Watch out, Livies. <laughs> What were you doing? Please. Hi little man, you up here with me? Well, leading her pack. She's a leader. Now you're leading the pack? You think so, do you? You guys never move around this much. You're gonna be tired. I like seeing you guys move around. Nobody knows what the scratching pole's for yet? You don't know what that scratching pole's for? for? They don't know what the scratching pole's for yet. Yeah, it'd be neat to see them figuring out everything. Figuring out the whole pasture. Open up. What do you think? She likes it. They get all that tall weed grass and brush to eat. They get the old man. They're eating brush. They're so happy. Do it again, do it again, little man. Do a dance. You goat so happy. Oh, let's eat the jacket. We have all these things. Oh eat. gosh, no, no, don't eat the coat. Oh, we'll try eating the coat. You like those leaves, don't you? Everywhere that will it goes, the babies go. Oh, oh little peas by herself though. I found the tree I cut for you. What's the matter, Buttercup? You don't want to be with the rest of the girls? Huh? Yeah, check out the post. That's the scratch on. So we've ended up having right around one acre of pasture land fenced in. We did woven wire with nine foot tall wood posts. And the wood posts are about every 60 feet with T posts in between them. The woven wire is very nice. It's not a welded wire, welded wire, but it's woven together. And this way, our contour of our property isn't flat. So with the ground contours, it actually pulls down 
and it hugs the ground really nice. If there's a hole or like a shallow low spot, the fence doesn't get right there. So we have a few little holes we need to fill in. And then also we made sure we put in a lot of gates. I wanted to make sure we could access the field easily enough. I didn't want to fence it in and be like, oh man, I wish we had more gates. So we have, I believe five access areas. And then up by the barn, we have two double gates right next to each other. This way, if we need to get in there to plow, I have plenty of room. I can open up the two gates, which we have a 12 foot gate on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we got a narrow little six foot gate. So the six foot gate we'll use as our primarily walk through gate. And then the 12 foot gate will pin in place. But if I need to plow in the winter time, I can open them both up and we can get the truck in there and we can plow really nice. So planning the pasture area and getting it fenced in, I was trying to think of for our climate, what is the best way to do it? And with all the snow we get here in the wintertime some years, it makes it a little bit difficult planning that. But this should work out really well for our climate this winter. We'll figure out for sure if we did good or not. So we got some low spots around the fence. I think this is probably like two or three holes that we need to fill. The way our gates are, we have gates in a couple of spots that we had to get raise them up higher right where they touch the ground so that way when they swing they get over a high spot or a low spot in the terrain so we're gonna have to make some berms right probably like a foot wide right under the gate so that way the goats can't get out we raise Nigerian dwarf goats so especially right now the babies are tiny they can slide under and squeeze in between tiny tiny openings so that's one thing we got to take care of there's a few spots where the gates hinge side is farther away than like say five inches from the gate itself so we got to make some like filler boards to go in between there the guy who put the fence in he did an awesome job i'll have a link in the video description down below if anybody's in the new hampshire vermont I think almost New England area he services the area it's not a paid promotion no kickback but we were really impressed with the guy he did a good job really happy he said he's been doing fence for over 15 years and this is the hardest soil he's ever worked and I'm, I'm surprised but I'm not at the same time every time we go to do anything we run into big rocks so we had to move some posts here and there because of big rocks we didn't video any of it but he had a lot of work to do he had a lot of holes that he had to post that he had to, he would start put them in the ground and he either hit a rock or it was almost like hard pan and he couldn't get through in other areas so we had to work around our land and kind of change stuff up a little bit if we hit a big rock but i'm very happy with how it all came out it's going to last us years i'm very excited with where we put the barn we located at the back part of the of our property so if you're looking at the barn the fence that's like behind the barn that is our property line on both sides so the plan is we have the pasture on the left hand side of the barn looking at it and then on the right hand side where the woods are right behind the barn that is not our property and then where it opens up to the new pasture area that we had logged last year I'll put a link to that video in the video description down below that is about four acres and i want to connect that to the barn i don't know if that'll happen next year or not but that we we're going to get fenced in but we're going to fence it in with different fence we don't need to go with the woven wire we could do like a high tensile electric fence i wanted to have one pasture that was woven wire so for me i feel more secure so if we have an issue or if we need to lock our animals up we have a good secured fenced in area to keep critters out and to keep our animals in. And also where we are, we get a ton of snow sometimes. So we can't use permanent fence, uh, temporary fencing all year round. We can only use it till snow comes. So we need a permanent kind of fence. And I wanted a permanent fence that was a physical barrier, not just an electric fence for a small pasture so the next pasture will be able to do an electric fence so we're trying to grow the farm here and, we're, and I'm trying to keep in mind like the different steps and processes the best way to do it to fit 
our property, our needs, and our climate. I can't wait for the new video aspect that having the pasture fenced in is going to allow us to have. Like, we've never been able to have our goats out on a big pasture. That's been one of the, our dreams for a long time. We've just always been trying to plan and figure things out and know that the bigger plan is something that you need to plan and take your time for and save for. So we've, we've been doing temporary fencing. We've been doing temporary barns. We've been, we've been figuring out the lay of our land. The biggest thing for us for a long time is we had an area that was full of woods that needed to get logged and cleared. The trees were over 40 years old. They were pine trees. They were half rotted. Every time we got a windstorm, everything was falling over and blowing down. So we had to take care of that first. And we were able to take care of that last year. And then it's like, okay, now we can figure out the process of where the barns are going to go, where we're going to put pasture land, how we're going to fence it in, how we're going to connect everything and get it to work. But it's nothing that happens overnight. So it's really great to see everything starting to come to fruition. It's a long journey. It's a process. But man, is it glorious to see it all coming together. We're actually working on a turnout area for the bucks. We're going to be changing around their fence. We should be doing that in the next couple of weeks. We've already got that started. But uh, it's just so exciting to see the progression of our homestead. If you guys are getting into homestead, I bet you you're going through the same thing. Or if you're in the planning phases, don't think you need to do it all at once. Take your time. Figure out the lay of your land. Don't go bankrupt doing it. Do it a little bit at a time, taking steps and preparation. It's a long process. It's hard sometimes to wait. Trust me. Uh -huh. We've been doing it for a while. But it's so nice to see now it all starting to come together and knowing that, hey, we're, we're putting the barn in the right place. We've done this in the right place. We didn't put it somewhere because it was going to work at the time. So uh, I can't wait to see the goats out in the pasture area more. They're gonna get more comfortable in it. We'll be able to leave them out in there all the time once we get the gates, holes taken care of. So look forward to some cool videos. I can't wait. We have to set up some obstacle courses. I don't know, something for the goats, but it's gonna be fun, guys. If you have any suggestions of what we should be doing in the new pasture, how we should set it up, what we should set up for the goats, leave it in the comments down below. We would love to hear it. This is just the beginning. Uh, homesteading it's so much fun it's a journey it's not a race but there's so much stuff we can do there's so much possibility there's an abundance everywhere it just excites me guys thanks for coming along on this journey list guys and we'll see you right back here in the next video at lumna acres a guide to modern homesteading self-sufficiency and freedom